one ordinary day. I was waiting for my husband to come home from work, and my two sons went to Cypher to school, and I was getting changed, and I heard this terrific noise. It was just like a giant cauldron of water being poured onto a, a fire, a shh sort of noise, you know. And my first reaction was, oh, the children. I thought maybe a plane was crashing or something like that. And I uh, slipped my jumper on and went outside to find my two sons lying flat on the ground in the garden in front of the house, shouting, Mummy, Mummy, there's a flying saucer. Well, naturally, I just said, come on, don't be stupid. Come in the house. But felt sort of a strange sensation. Uh, went into my way up the side of the house to where we had a pump where we used to get all our water from and um, automatically looked up to see this all I can describe this huge Mexican hat it was stationary this thing and it was bright silver in color and it had a dome a dome it was tilted to sort of I could see the occupants in it you saw people in it? I saw people in it. There were two people in there. Um, these people were beautiful people. That's the only way I can des describe them. Um, they had long golden hair, like a page, bo page boy bob, just like the old kings. You used to see photographs of the old kings. And the, the color of the hair was golden. Now, I was really... What I, were they dressed in? They, they had a sort of a pearl neck jumper affair, like a ski top suit, mm. in, in pale blue. Now, these people weren't sat behind, one behind the other. They were sat together, but this, whatever it was, was tilted so that I could see them and they could see me. Were you looking at them through windows, through portholes? Um, no, not portholes. It was just sort of the, like a cockpit, I suppose, that had this perspective or glass or whatever it was they could see me anyway and I could see them and um, they were uh, they had beautiful faces I shall never forget their faces as long as I live their foreheads seemed to be a, a bit larger than you know the the bottom of their faces as as normal people you would expect to see but um, maybe this was, was just the whatever they had around their heads which was like a transparent fishbowl and they just looked, and I was absolutely paralytic with fear. I couldn't move, although my mind was ticking over. And they looked so sympathetic that I was just mesmerized for what seemed to be, oh, ages, but it could have only been seconds. And I turned to sort of look down at the boys, was unaware that they were with me because I was so absorbed. And the next thing, I looked up, and it was gone. How low had it been? It had been the, the height, I couldn't tell you. But the house that you've seen, it was just on top of the roof. It was hovering on top of the, the roof. How big was it compared with the size compared, of the house? It, it, it swallowed the, the whole circumference of, of the roof. I couldn't see. The roof was completely blotted out. The chimneys, I couldn't see. All I could see was this massive uh, object that I described as a, a, like a Mexican's hat, a Mexican hat without the bubbles. And then it flew away sideways or upwards? No, or? It, I, I didn't see. I just looked up and it had gone. But I assume it went straight up. Because for a short while after in the sky, I looked around and I said to my two boys, well, can you see anything? Can you see anything? And they said, there it is, Mum. And they pointed up and I watched it. It was just like a little cotton meal in the sky. And it circled us three times. It went round three times and then it just shut off and that was it when I started to analyze my myself afterwards uh, I fear that I might have had a, an hallucination but then I knew I, I hadn't had because my sons were so sure about what they'd seen and what I'd seen and I went it went through my mind that it was a secret uh, weapon from Russia and then I thought well it can't be that because if they had something like that they wouldn't need to fear anybody or anything were you but, scared by it? Did you run indoors? Oh, I was petrified. I couldn't move. I couldn't move a muscle. I was paralyzed with fear. But um, now I wouldn't be.
because now when I look back, you know, I think what 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 an amazing thing to have happened and for me to have seen it. And when your husband came home, where were you? Well, when my husband came home from the office, I was locked in the house with my children under a big kitchen table that we were using. Under the table? Under the table, yes. It's funny now when I look back, you know, it sounds absolutely ridiculous, but this is the truth. This happened. And that's it. We were ridiculed. It was very embarrassing at the time, and people, they, they possibly thought, oh, she's a nutter. But, you know, who cares? It, this is something that's happened to me, and I'm a practically-minded person, and that's it. It was on a, an October day, the 21st of October in 1954. I was in the back kitchen of the house preparing myself, just having washed, and I heard this noise. Now, it was just like a, a giant cauldron of water being poured onto a red-hot fire, but if you can imagine, a thousand times louder. And my first reaction was the children. I must get out, there's a plane crashing. So I slipped on my jumper, I run out, I ran out through the side entrance of the house towards the front garden to look for them coming across the fields. And to my amazement, there suspended on the top of the roof of this old farm was this object that I can only describe as a huge Mexican hat. It was that shape without the bobbles. It must have been 15 to 20 yards from where I stood. It covered the roof, so in circumference, it must have been about 60 feet. It was, it was enormous. The people in the spacecraft were just looking out. I could see them from the waist to the top of their heads. They were very beautiful people. They had long golden hair, like the old kings used to wear, turned under. They had a very vivid blue, like ski top affair on. And they just looked at us. Their eyes, the expression in their eyes, were full of compassion. And then, all of a sudden, I felt the tension leaving me. And I felt movement, and I turned round to touch my children. And when I looked again, it was gone. Now, we stood there, and I said to the boys, did you see what I seen? Yes, mummy, yes. I said, well, wh where is it? It's gone. And we looked, and my second son said, there it is, mum. And we watched it in the sky, just like a cotton reel, circle round the farm three times. And then it just shot straight up. And the illustration. And the face is a slim either side. Um, a lot slimmer. Beautiful. Would that be why the uh, Gavin Gibbons, when he did the illustration, I yeah. think it was a UFO news or something, that that was a lot thinner in the face. Yeah, that's right. Right. Did you find that evidence? Yeah, I don't know so we're uh, Dawn's interrupting that's with a cup of tea. Come on, then, Dawn. <laughs> The saucer was no longer there, but a few minutes later we saw it circle the house three times mm. before it shot upwards like a rocket against the, the darkening sky. Oh. Quite true. Yeah, thank you. Jeff.